Hello everyone, and welcome back to Make Believe, where we're playing the house in Phantom Morgana. Well, we're always saying that, that these stories don't have a happy ending, and it seems like we're reaching, we reached that point in this story. As the knights and everything came to kill uh, Michelle, and she was trapped inside a room where they didn't realize or they didn't even hear her there. Shelf. After much, much along, the door swung open all on its own. It happened so uncer unceremoniously, it was hard to believe I had actually been trapped inside. No idea how much time had passed, as it seems the witch actually uh, realized his wish. But the chill in the air suggested it was deep into the night, and with the biting cold, there was a stench of blood. Oof. So we're starting here, huh? Why? Why? Michelle, I never, I never wanted this. Uh, 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 uh. You didn't understand that all, Michelle. You didn't know the depth of my feelings for you. You didn't know how intensely I wanted you, how fervently I loved you. I was never going to be able to find someone else and live happily with them. It had to be you. The thought of anyone else touching me terrified me. You just didn't understand. I don't want to live in this stupid world. Hold on. Okay. I don't know if that was a lag or something or if it was on purpose. I just want to make sure there was no hidden dialogue from that. The time I spent with you truly was the happiest time of my life. And now we're back to the present. I remember. I remember everything now. You died on that day. You were killed. You disappeared from this world. And left me behind. That's right. I remember. I remember the pain. The agony of death. And the fear. Which is very weird that they talk about, like, oh yeah, we both remember when I died, you know? He did, indeed, die that day. You refused to listen to me. Do you have any idea how it felt to feel you dying from the other side of that door? Giselle, what are you to take me with you? Is this what you wanted to see? My memories, the traces of my life on this earth. And there, in order to find your truth, we need more of the story. There's more? Very well then. If you want more story, I'll tell you more. What comes next? It's both a continuation and a brand new tale. The Maid's Tale. When you heard it all, I expect you to commend me for not forgetting how to smile. Interesting that we didn't have the image of the maid here. 
We haven't completely cut through the darkness yet. An arctic wind blows past me. At the same time, I'm gripped with an overwhelm overwhelming urge to break down to tears. Perhaps this is this solitude she felt for so long. I have to face this. I have a responsibility to her to do so. And I have to atone for being such a misguided fool all those years ago. Convinced that I was doing what was best. Oh, we were about to end the chapter last time and I stopped. Well, that's awkward. So there's the Maid's Tale now, the sixth door. 1,900... 1,099. 1,099, yeah. 1099. I don't know how to read that. This is my tale, and the maid's tale. A tale of a foolish, naive girl. Looking back on it now, I'm ashamed of everything. But I'll tell you my story, in, in its entirety we felt embellishments this time. I ask that you please not let go of my hand. Now we're back to this scene. The only things the knight left behind were a garment and a large pool of your blood. Blood had seeped into the fabric and it was beginning to dry. When I clenched it into my hand, it made soft, crackling noises. The oppressive stench of death lingered the tower. Michelle, no point in a life without you. You know that, right? Have a wonderful family? You know I can't do that. Hey. Michelle, answer me. Back to me. I don't care if it's a, as a ghost. I just need you here with me. Back to me. Talk to me about nothing. Uh, and about everything. Be irritated with me when I do something stupid. Scoff at me whenever, at, whenever I tell a bad joke. Rouse me a chest again. Put your arms around me. One more time. Come on. I'm begging you. You won't come back to me. Then I'll go to you. I don't care if that's not what you wanted from me. This world without you is meaningless. Dying won't guarantee you get to see him again. Hmm? I'm guessing that's the witch. He spends all this time refusing to talk to me. And when he finally does, he begs me to save his love. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Ooh, the music. Rather disappointing, to be honest. Who, who are you? Where are you? <laughs> By death, aren't you? Within these walls, I am everywhere. And you've heard of me before. What? I, I have no... Heavens, you are slow. Is that pretty head of yours only for decoration? What? But, but, no, there's no one else. You might be thicker than this walls, my dear. Although, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You never did believe anything Michelle said about me. You thought I was going mad. <laughs> this is brilliant. No. There's no way. It, it can't be. 
the curse witch Morgana? Oh, you even know my name, do you? It would appear my legend has survived longer than I expected. I suppose I should thank all the humans who pass it down for me. You... You actually exist? I most certainly do, my dear. As I recall, you don't believe in the supernatural, do you? But it's hard to deny when that very witch is talking to you right this moment. Michelle was not even slightly mad, my dear. I told him he was better off without his sanity, but he refused to listen. He wasn't deranged by any means. His surroundings that were his environment, the people around him, his whole world. Can you imagine how dreadful that must have been? To be the only sane resident in a world gone utterly mad? Yeah, that's just the other side of the point. It's a miracle he managed to keep his head. Remember what you said before he died, my dear? You said it was all in his You said he couldn't tell the difference between illusion and reality. You said he had long since gone insane. Shouted at the top of your lungs even. But no, that's not what I meant. Ah, poor, poor Michel. If only you had believed him about the witch. I feel bad for you too, though. Don't get me wrong. You have my pity. What did you ever do to deserve this? Oh, and just to be perfectly clear, I played no part in either your or Michelle's misfortune. The only force to blame for that is fate of Father Morgana. You... The house of Father Morgana. So actually, the, the house of fate Morgana or something like that? Hmm. I'm not really sure what Father exactly means. You were good, honest, joyful, lovable woman. And look at how the world treated you. And the music... Empty up. <laughs> May I ask you something? Was it you who sealed me in the tower? Yeah, it was. That was what Michelle wanted. Once I told him I would grant his wish. Though... So, I did as he asked. Though, it looks like that ended up causing you even more pain. How tragic. So, you're planning to die? Are you hoping to reunite with him in heaven? That plan's destined to fail from the outset, my dear. God teaches that suicide is a sin, and you go to hell for that. Also, I, I was gonna say my dear before, and then I saw that they added that in, at the end of the sentence anyway, so... Perfect. Then... I will not kill you. Why not? Because I swore to Michelle that I would save your life. <laughs> Poor, poor Giselle. If you have any other wish, I'll be happy to grant it. I can't bear to see you so miserable after all. I wish you have but a single desire right now. To see him once more. Isn't that right, Giselle? 
Are you saying you can't make that happen? You bring him back to life for me? The forces of life and death are outside of my realm, unfortunately. That is God's territory, after all. Or the angels, perhaps. Hmm. However, I can guarantee you this. His reincarnation, no, his reconstruction, his reconstruction, yes, you can meet him again, uh, not in this life, but in some future life, just imagine it, finding your beloved again after overcoming so much tragedy, and 20, maybe a hundred year, long years from now, you're finally reunited. Doesn't that sound marvelous? True, unparalleled love in its purest form. What do you think? Sounds like a good deal, doesn't it? Just because he can bring his soul back doesn't make it, Michelle. I want to be with him, that brisk, impenetrable, slightly mature, but gentle as a butterfly man, a man who sincerely, deeply loved me. The butterfly man. Okay, sorry. If it's the same soul in a different body, can you still call him my Michelle? <laughs> huh? Ah, my apologies. You beat me to the punchline. And you did so with such ardor, you threw me off balance. You're exactly right. The idea that if your love is strong enough, you can both be reborn and have the exact same relationship is utter fairy tale nonsense. You must be the same people to have the same love, which is why I am not promising his rebirth or reincarnation, but his reconstruction. You, your wish can become a reality, dear Giselle, as long as you wish for it with all your heart. It can come true. I'll wish for his reconstruction as well. You have a witch asking to make this happen, my dear, so you can be confident that it will bear fruit in the end. And you wish for him to remain as himself. If he truly loves you, and he too wishes to reunite with you, your wish shall be granted. Will you really wish with me? I most certainly will, my poor, poor, pitiful, dear Giselle. I shall offer my most heartfelt prayers for you. I'll wish for it. Until the moment of my death, I'll keep wishing for us to be reunited as the same people. I can't guarantee your reconstruction, though. Uh, what? I only said I guaranteed this. Michelle is the only reconstruction I will wish for. I would not ask for yours. But why not? You're not looking at a benevolent wish-granting goddess or an angel with a magic bow and arrow, after all. You're looking at a cursed witch. Then, how am I to be with him again. I can offer you but one option. 
that will allow you to reunite with your reconstructed Michelle. Tell me, what do I have to do? You must live. Here, with me. Live with you? What do you mean? It was Michelle who resurrected me, but he cannot serve as my guide. I have work to do, but I cannot do it alone. I need a guide to assist me. Because as you can see, I have no body. And that's where you come in, my dear Giselle. If this house did not exist in this world, then perhaps I might be able to give myself form. My soul's form. I don't understand anything you're saying. You don't need to really understand any of it. All I need from you is for you to show your utmost hospitality to the people I'm expecting to show up at this mission someday. And thus, uh, she became the maid that, that welcomed Yukimura, that welcomed Jacobo, that welcomed, um... I feel like there's another character by... Oh! The flexing hair boy, which is... I forgot his name, but yeah. Entertaining your guests? That's right, my dear. Michelle isn't the only whose reconstruction I'm wishing for. There are others. Several. Anus. The nurse. So, I want you to serve as a maid and watch over them when they arrive. And until then, keep the house in good condition, will you, my dear Giselle? What, what are you scheming? Is that something you truly need to know, my dear? All you need to do is wish Pray for the day your beloved appears before you again. For the day he wrapped his arms around you once more. One word, Giselle. That's all I require. Do you want to see him again? Do you want to hear his voice again? I can promise you, you have your happiness back. Uh, what reason is there to hesitate after all? There isn't one. Or are you simply going to give up? <laughs> I wonder what would happen if you just said no. If you disappear from this world. How will Michelle react when he comes back? Will he be sad? Angry, perhaps? Or will he forget about you? And fall into the arms of another woman? No, he can't. Then make up your mind. Will you come with me? Or we throw it all away. I... 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 <laughs> if I had given a little thought, I would have realized she was manipulating me. That she was just telling me what I wanted to hear. But I believed her. I accepted her proposition. As unbelievable as it sounded, my desire for it to be real overpowered everything. It was impossible not to grasp at the straws she was dangling in front of me. That was all I could do at the time. The witch's voice also had an inexplicable, well, 
power to it. It made me believe, as outrageous as it was, that she really could bring you back, reconstruct you even. Maybe because I had seen her turn a doll or into an immovable wall. Or maybe because I had heard her dis disembodied voice. But I don't think those are enough to explain. I guess is she had me under the spell. On the hearse fell. That was the moment I became the maid. But I assure you, I was, at that point, still the same Giselle you knew and loved. At least at that point. Down to the rain never seems to stop. Am I hallucinating it, maybe? From the moment I lent my ear to the witch's sweet temptation, the mansion underwent an unimaginable transformation. No light shone through the windows, despite them still being unobstructed, not morning, day, or evening. In fact, the concept of morning, day, and evening did not seem to even exist. The darkness resembled that of when the windows had all been sealed up, but there was something more fundamentally unreal about it, like it was hovering over a vast, all-consuming abyss within a constant pace of balance. I felt like it had been cast into some unknown room. And that was why there was nothing beyond the wall. Uh, I mean... That was why there was nothing beyond the windows. Sorry. My mind wandered off. And the house was not the only thing that underwent changes. I too was no exception. In the blink of an eye, my basic human urges vanished. I stopped feeling hungry, and I no longer needed sleep. Naturally, I was bewildered by what was happening to me, what I was turning into. I think I'll take a look around. Maybe there have been other changes. Such as her not showing up in the mirror? So I meandered through the mansion halls. My original intent was to explore the entire house, but I found myself drawn towards one room in particular. That's right, your bedchamber. There was no light, not a trace of color remaining in your chambers. But the bed was the same shape, the walls the same texture, the curtains the same design as when you had been alive. Michelle, I'm praying, I'm always praying. That someday, we'll meet again. Oh, there's something hidden under the bed. What could it be, I wonder? It's that painting. This is the white hair girl from the stories, huh? Right? Never did get to ask why he got so angry about seeing this. I hate when it does that. I'm sure it's something he didn't want to be reminded of. 
perhaps having to do with his family. I was right not pressing him about it. So... Oh. I'm pretty sure the expression changed into a smile. What? Ah. Uh. What the... Did the painting just... smirk at me? Oh. Oh god. Ah. Uh, oh. Jeez, Giselle. What are you doing tripping over yourself? It was just that cursed witch messing with your head. No need to get spooked over a tasteless prank. Ugh. When I stumble, yes, I knock the drawer open. There's something inside. Letters, it looks like. I shouldn't touch those. They're not mine. But... Since we're already here... Want something of Michelle to have. Something to remember him by. His letters would be his handwriting. They would contain his words. Please, forgive me, Michelle. I don't mean any ill will, but I'm going to take these. I must say, there are an impressive number of Well then, what the, what on earth, like someone dumped an inkwell on every page, but why? Was this the witches doing too? Yeah, it has to be. It must have been her. It definitely wasn't you, Michelle. Wasn't it? Moment of silence? front door. I wonder what it's like outside. I can't get it open. What's going on? That bar isn't set, but it won't budge an inch. Just like Up in the tower. You know, the windows. To the windows, to the walls. They should open, then I can. Hmm. What's going on here? What the heck's going on? It's like there's an invisible wall in front of the window. My hand won't go any further. <laughs> this is rich. What else can I do but laugh after all? What in the wor world? Madness. Ugh. Hurry up, Michelle. Return to me. And get me out of here. Hmm. 
please get me out of here. Hmm. Yeah, now she's suffering. I had no idea how to explain anything that had happened to Dimension, but it was clear enough that I was in prison within the was all alone in a nebulous sphere of bleak darkness, and beyond its walls lay void. The layout of the house remained unchanged, but I felt as though I had wandered into a twisting labyrinth. I could cry, but there was no one there to soothe me. All I did was provoke her disembodied cackling. Which she followed with. You chose this, my dear. So you need to hold yourself. Gather and keep wishing. My only real pastime was cleaning. I dusted the same corners again and again, swept the same floor, polished the same dishes. One day, I decided I would read the books left in the library. One day, I decided I would read the books left in the library. Despite there being more than 100 volumes, I finished every one of them in what it felt like no time at all. My life was a never-ending cycle. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. The house had no visitors. No one, rather nothing, at all set foot upon the property. There were no sign of other life whatsoever here. No birds singing in the morning, no cats sunbathe in the garden, no mice scurrying about the kitchen. There was nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that broke the long stretches of silence was her voice. Tell me, was she kind to you? Was she friendly and cautious? To, was she friendly and gorgeous? Because she was quite harsh when she spoke to me. These were the kind of things she was always saying to me. These were the kind of things she oh, was always saying to me. He didn't show up today, did he, my dear? Are you still praying, my dear? Do you think you actually come, my dear Nami? I'm still wishing. The wishing, just like I promised, my dear. You know why he hasn't come for you, my dear? Because perhaps he doesn't actually love you as much as you do. 
Iya. My dear. My dear. Have you lost your mind yet? Shut up. You never had enough. I'm done with you. <laughs> enough. Please. Enough already. So worked out. You're lo you love to talk, don't you? So why not have a nice little chat? This is not a chat. Maybe not in your mind, you be my dear. think about chatting only constitutes conversation you enjoy but I don't think the world's usage needs to be so restricted personally you're just go getting off on watching me squirm oh not at all actually you have all my best wishes if he ever does show up for you Not at all. You have all my best if he ever does show up for you. Mm. Ooh, so scary. If you're at, if you're making that face when he shows up, <laughs> he might not even recognize you. What? You haven't looked in the mirror recently, have you? Go on, there, my dear. See just how frightful you've become. But well, she can't see herself in the mirror. And this remind me of the Yukimura story. How the person um, has such low self-esteem. No. The witch was right. I look nightmarish. Okay, so she does show in the reflection. My face was pale and lifeless. My eyes hollow. My cheeks sunken. Heavy bags under my eye. My hair had lost its sheen. And it grew rapidly. was quickly losing everything that made me recognizable as me, and the thought sent a shiver down my spine. N no, this, this isn't me. This is some kind of trick. You're trying to deceive me? Baseless accusation. You really must stop blaming people every time something doesn't turn out the way you want, my dear. But, but you... But my face was more... More... More what? More expressive. More cheerful. Brighter. 
rosier, perhaps? Oh, you're right. And you were never this gloomy, were you? Right. I wasn't... I was always more cheerful than this. Naive girl. Could you be any more narcissistic? Huh? What you're looking at is undeniably exactly what you look like now. Time to not do that to you. Nor did I. The negative energy using from within you is what's causing you to take on this form. Did you think that you didn't have any dark, ugly emotions inside you? Did you believe he would always be with smile, no matter what? Did you assume you were pure and beautiful? No one likes that exists, my dear. What you see in the mirror is the true you. Your hideous, twisted heart. If you, if you weren't always being so nasty, this would have never happened. Anyone's heart would be twisted listening to you long enough. So you're saying Michelle's heart was twisted too? I spoke to him for years after all. No, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm just easy. I suppose I may have crossed the line somewhere. I mean, you know what ill well, Giselle, honest. Hmm. Allow me to give you one word of advice, though. Look at yourself in the mirror, oh. If you continue deteriorating, oh my god, at this rate, and end up looking like a corpse. When Michelle comes and see you, you won't jump for joy, but run away. Screaming in terror. Stop talking. Please, just stop. You know, Giselle, this is only the very beginning. You might not show up for hundreds of years. I can't, I can't live that long. Absolutely brilliant. You still think you're alive? What? The moment you agree to come with me, you cease to be of this world. So don't worry about time, my dear. You can wait as long as it takes. As long as it takes for him to arrive. <laughs> As the witch had suggested, I started checking my appearance in the mirror every day. I wasn't too sure I didn't turn into some horrifying creature. My hair grew, so time seemed to be passing, but I didn't appear to age at all. The flower of time had become perplexing, vague and uncertain. Was it stopped? Or was it moving? I couldn't tell. On occasion, I would practice smiling in front of the mirror. But smile was, after all, my one really distinctive feature. And I was certain you had seen me smiling more than anything. Even if my appearance had changed drastically, I thought, you would still be able to recognize me by my smile. 
A woman standing alone in front of a mirror, practicing how to smile. I'm sure that was quite the comical sight. And that was how my days went. And how we're gonna leave for next time. As now we see that Giselle was cursed by the witch. To stay waiting the mansion. Waiting to see a reconstruction of Michelle. And see if he remembers and still loves her. Meanwhile, he was gonna attend to other people that were reconstructed that were sinners but there was so much more to her transformation as we're getting to see there then but yeah that it was all for this episode and see you next time bye